late. How come you're not on the way to the carnival with Nancy? Nancy's on her way to the carnival with Mr. Herman Hoffman. That's how come. Well, she's not the only girl in Summerfield. She is for me. Leroy, what you need is a few lessons from your uncle. The way he feels, if one streetcar goes by without him, another will be along in a few minutes. Nancy happens to be the only streetcar I desire. But if she'd rather go with Happy Hoffman, I'd rather stay home. It would do me good to catch up on my homework anyway. My, my, the things I've seen love do. Good evening, all. Hello, Unc. Thought you were taking Nancy to the carnival. It's off. Well, don't you want to take her? Sure. We had a date, but she broke it to go with another fella. To think I'd live to see the day a nephew of mine and make a statement like that. I can't believe it. You sound like a patty waist. It's true, Unc. And no other patty waist can make that statement. What are you going to do about it? What can I do? We'll get another date. I've tried. It's no use. Well, then go without her. And let her see me at the carnival alone? Well, why not? It's a free carnival. It costs 50 cents to get in, and the rides are a dime apiece. If that's what's worrying you, I'll give you a small advance on your allowance. Thanks, Unc. But it's not money I need. Right. It's gumption. You know what I'd do if I were in your situation? I'd forget there ever was such a girl as Nancy. I'd go to that carnival, eat, drink, and be merry. And mark my words, she'd be on your doorstep in the morning. That's the way it is with women, my boy. When you want them, you can't have them. And when you don't, you can't get rid of them. Me, you better listen to your uncle. I'm sweet and lady callers off the doorstep every morning. You really think it'd work, Unc? Absolutely. Now, eat those peanuts, ride those rides, meet life head on. I'll do it. Let you know how things come out when I get home, Unc. Good. I'll be spending a quiet evening at home. Good luck, my boy. Thanks, Unc. Good night. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, you'll be the making of that boy. Well, thank you, Bertie. Yeah, I'm the logical one to see that Leroy grows up to be a fine man. You're doing a good job. He'll be a fine man, all right. A little lonesome, maybe, but a mighty fine man. <laughs> Hello, my dear. Oh, hi, Unc. What's with Leroy? He left here like he was shot out of a cannon. He's going to the carnival. Oh, with Nancy? Did they pack things up? They will. Once she sees his heart isn't broken, she'll come around. And if she doesn't... <laughs> well, anyway, she's not the only streetcar on the track. Well, was this your idea? Well, I told Leroy how to handle it. With women, you have to show them that you can get along without them. Well, I'm glad you feel that way, Unky, because it makes what I have to tell you a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Not bad news, I hope. Well, nothing serious. Remember when you broke your date with Lois Kimball last week? Indeed I do, poor dear. <laughs> Hit her pretty hard, I guess. But she'll recover. Oh, that's what I wanted to tell you, Unky. I think she has recovered. I just saw her driving out toward the reservoir. Lois? <laughs> Couldn't be. She doesn't have a car. It was Wilbur Branston's car. You mean the man who runs the theater? Mm -hmm. What would she be doing with his car? She doesn't drive. Well, she wasn't driving, Unky. She was snuggled up next to the driver. Branston? Well, hmm. well, they were laughing and joking and having a wonderful time. It's nice to see people having a good time, isn't it, Unky? Not Lois. I mean, depends on the people. I wonder how she met him. She shouldn't be running around in open cars with men laughing and carrying on. Well, I didn't say it was an open car, and I certainly didn't say she was carrying on. Just the same, she's my girl, more or less. And she has a reputation to think of. Mine, too. She shouldn't go out with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Well, this was Wilbur. He doesn't seem like a very nice man. I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, she could have called me if she wanted to go out the reservoir tonight. Probably wouldn't have been as much fun with all three of you. <laughs> Besides, she invited you to go along last night, and you had other plans, remember? That was different. Well, it doesn't matter. As you explained to Leroy, she's just another streetcar. All you have to do is be patient, and another one will come along any minute. Right, Unky? Right. The tracks are loaded. <laughs> the least she could have done was call me. It's a beautiful night. 
I hate to see it go to waste. What's that? Nothing. Never mind. Well, don't get upset. I'm not upset. Would you like a glass of milk? Certainly not. Can't you see I'm reading? <laughs> Two glasses of milk, just in case you're finished reading. Oh, thank you, my dear. Are you all right? Never better. It's uh, good to get an early night once in a while. I like it too. Sort of sets you up for the rest of the week. Yeah. Well, sleep tight, my dear. Good night, Unky. I hope I didn't worry you. Worry me? About what? Lois and Mr. Branston. Oh, don't be silly. I haven't even given it a thought. Good night, Lois. <laughs> I'm Marjorie. <laughs> of course you are. Yeah. Right along the bed. You're going to stay home then? Do you think you'll call Miss Kimball? Not on your tintype. When she comes to her senses, she'll call me. Oh, I'm sure she will. Good night, Uncle. say goodnight so fast. Oh, uh, I really should. I'd ask you in, but it's a little late. Is that the way you treat all your dates? Just send them right home? Oh, now, Wilbur. Uh, I really should say goodnight. Oh, come on. Just for a few. Oh. Just for a little while. But, Wilbur, isn't it a little cold for the swing? Not for a red-blooded couple like us. <laughs> well, all right, then. We'll just... We'll just sit here for a minute. There's nothing so romantic. Oh, porch swing. Especially when there's a girl and a man in it. <laughs> Just look at that big yellow moon. Doesn't that suggest anything to you? Well, it, it suggests that I'd better be getting in. <laughs> what was that? A fish in your pond? Well, there are some big ones in there. Thank 
Thank you, Peavy. Hmm. Ah, where'd you get the sniffles, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I... <laughs> oh, never mind. Very well. How are things at the water department? Don't mention water. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> <laughs> my, my. Good morning, Mr. Peavy. Oh, hello there, Mr. Branston. Nice day, isn't it? Well, I think so. Uh, oh, Mr. Branston, have you met Mr. Gildersleeve? Hello, Gildersleeve. <laughs> hello, Branston. Uh, Mr. Peavy, I'd like a box of candy. Two pounds. Very well. Yes, we, we have a very nice selection. Fruits, uh, nuts, uh, caramels, almost anything that you'd like. I met a wonderful girl last night. Oh. Gesundheit. I, uh, I take it you're seeing her again this evening. <laughs> Branson, you're not dating again tonight, are you? I'm going to call her when she wakes up. We were up a little late. Confound it, I'm seeing her tonight. Peavy, give me a five-pound box of candy. Very well. Mr. Peavy, do you have a larger box? Well, perhaps I could tape a couple of boxes together. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Now, maybe you gentlemen would like to branch out into perfume. Give me the best you've got. Very well. Oh, you like this. This is a delightful scent. <laughs> this has made many a man leave home. I'll take it. Have the $10, please. Thank you. $10. Now, what did you have, Mr. Gildersleeve? Peavy. Give me that big bottle of perfume. But this is ridiculous. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. I've been in the theatrical business. Oh, practically all my life. Uh, when I bought the theater, I was afraid the town might be a little small, but uh, it's big enough. <laughs> of course, I don't want to talk about myself all evening, but uh, not many years ago, I produced a successful Broadway play. Well, when I took over the water department... Uh, excuse me. As I was saying, when the mayor first appointed me... Let me take a good look at your profile. Mm -hmm. If I were producing that play today, your name would be in lights. Oh, Wilbur. You know, I've always said you've got a real cute profile. Uh -huh. She's cute all over, and such poise. You, you must have been a model. Well, yes, I have done little models. I knew it. Well, I noticed that poise when you first came to town. In fact, I think I'll book some road shows in my theater this winter. You know, some of the better plays. Oh, really? If you're interested in becoming a star, Lois, dear, I'd be very happy to discover you. Oh, that sounds wonderful. You will be. Yeah, I think it's time we were going. I was hoping you'd feel that way. Uh, good night. Oh, must you leave so soon? Well, Wilbur said he was up late last night. No, but I'm used to it. Uh, if it's getting past your bedtime, Gildersleeve, I'll get your hat. No, wait a minute, Branson. Good night. But I'm not going unless you go. Well, it is getting a little late. I'm sorry you boys are leaving. But thanks for the perfume. Yeah, not at all. Good night, Lois. Good night. Uh, what about tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? Yeah, I was going to ask for a date tomorrow night. Oh, well, then why don't the three of us do something? What can three people do? Well, <laughs> say, there's a carnival in town. Well, personally, I don't care much for carnivals, but if you like them, Branson, why don't you go? Oh, I think they're fun. You do? Well, fine, and Lois, you and I will go to the carnival. What makes you think I don't like carnivals? I think they're fun. Oh, well, then it's all settled. We'll all go together. Must we? Must we? Well, good night, Lois. Good night. Good night. Well, I uh, parked my car around on this side. Oh? Uh, I parked mine around the corner. Yeah, well, then we'll say good night then. Good night, Gildersleeve. Good night. Uh, good night. Good night. <laughs> Oh, I just love 
love carnival. This is a wonderful idea, Wilbur. Thank you. Say, uh, let's do something. Hey, Wilbur, did you ever play baseball? Step right up, boys. Win your lady friend a prize. Three throws for 15 cents. Pick out your prize, Lois. Hey, stand aside, Branston. Stand aside. Here you are. Thank you. Those balls must be warped. Well, it looks like it's up to me, Lois. <laughs> yep. There you are. You just won a nice prize. <laughs> All right, here you are, sir. Test your strength. Loser first. You are. All right. <laughs> Stand back. We'd better. His aim isn't so good. All right, folks. He's ready. Stand back. This man looks dangerous. Oh, uh, yeah. Nice try, Throckmorton. Here you are, sir. You win yourself a beautiful prize. Now, anybody else here care to step up and test this fate? Who's going to be next here? Step right up. Must be something I can do better than this guy. What'd you say? No, oh, nothing. <laughs> say, they've got my favorite ride over there. The funnel of love. Why, Throckmorton, you wouldn't want to go in that dark place, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Say, we've lost Wilbur. <laughs> oh, no, you haven't. I just bought two tickets for the Tunnel of Love. Let's go, Lois. No, Wilbur, I get to take Lois in the Tunnel of Love. Well, why should you? Well, remember what you said. Losers first. That's right, Wilbur. Here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Lois. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, look. Oh, poor little kid. What's your name, little girl? Susan. Well, what's your last name, Susan? I don't know. <laughs> hey, what's your mother's name, Susan? Mommy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, Gildersleeve, why don't you take her down to the carnival officials? No, I want my mom. Oh, don't cry, darling. Gildersleeve, go ahead. Ramston. I want my mommy. She was right over there. Well. I guess I'd better go with little Susan. There's no use letting those tickets go to waste. Come on, Lois. The boats will be leaving. Oh, goodbye, Throckmorton. Goodbye, Lois. Have a good time. I want my mother. Oh, all right, Susan. We'll see if we can find her. Well, nothing's very sweet to me today. Now, you keep your eye open for your mummy. If we don't find her, can I go home with you? Oh, we'll find her all right. Don't worry about that. We'll find her. Step right up, mister. Test your skill and win a prize. Will you win me a prize, mister? Well, I, uh... Please. Well, I'll try. You hold my candy. Thank you. Nothing to it. Why couldn't I have done that before? You just won yourself a teddy bear. Well, here you are, Susan. Now take the candy. Now, let's see if we can find your mummy. Susan! Where did you go? Oh, me? You go 
might get lost, too. Susan, I think we'd better find a policeman. Oh, there's my mommy. Excuse me. Mommy, mommy, here I am. Darling. Oh. Where have you been? I was so worried. I got lost, Mommy, and this nice man took care of me. Oh, thank you. I couldn't find her anywhere. I was desperate. Well, everything's all right now. <laughs> we were going to have some ice cream, weren't we? Oh, yes. Well, uh, now that your mommy's here. Oh, of I... course. We mustn't bother the nice man again. We've taken enough of his time already. Goodbye, and, and thank you again. Don't mention it. She's in the tunnel of love. Alone? No, I'm afraid not, my boy. She was Wilbur Branston. Happy Branston? Uh -huh. To think I'd live to see the day when an uncle mine would stand around and let another guy take his girl into the tunnel of love. <laughs> what can I do? It's not my tunnel. Yeah, but it's your girl. It's no use, Leroy. What you need is a little gumption. You've got to show her you're the boss. Show her you don't care. Work for me. You did? Sure. Nancy was on my doorstep this morning when I left for school. She carried my books, too. Where is she now? I sent her to buy some candy corn. Yeah. What do you know? Why don't you practice what you preach, Unc? Say, who was that lady you were just talking to? Yeah, that was Susan's mother. They invited me to have some ice cream. She'll do. Now get over there and eat that ice cream. Roll those big brown eyes and meet light head on. Have you seen my uncle? Oh, hi, Leroy. No, as a matter of fact, I was looking for him myself. It's his turn with me in the tunnel of love. Oh, there he is. Where? Looks like he's sitting this one out. Oh. Who's she? Who? That, that woman. Well, I don't know. Probably a friend. Lois, come on. A friend, huh? Well, we'll see about that. Hey, where are you going? Mr. Branston's waiting for you. Well, let him wait. You know, your face looks so familiar to me. Oh, really? Well, I suppose you've seen my picture in the paper many times. <laughs> oh, I know. You're the manager of the city baseball team. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm the uh, city water commissioner. Oh, you are? Yeah, I've been city water commissioner in Summerfield for years and years. <laughs> I suppose the city could get along without me, but... Uh, not for long. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> you should see him pitch baseball. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton. Oh, Lois. May I see you for a moment, please? Oh, yes, certainly. <laughs> Excuse me. I see my friends here. I'll uh, see you again. Well, well soon, I hope. <laughs> you bye, Susan. Bye. 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 Well, I see you found Susan's mother. Yes. Uh, isn't she pretty? Too pretty. See the way she holds her mother's hand? Her mo oh, you mean Susan's pretty. Yes. Oh, Trot Morton. Uh, I'd like to hold your hand. May I? Buddy, step right up and test your strength. Well, I, uh, Lois, can I ask you a personal question? Mm -hmm. Did you go in the tunnel of love? No. I was waiting for you. Where's Wilbur? He's waiting for me. Lois, come on, the boat's leaving. Come on, Lois. Hey, buddy, show your lady friend how strong you are. 